Listen, I'm a true believer that conversations can change the world. What's up, everyone? My name is LaPortia Thomas, and welcome back to the Can't Bully Me podcast. So, Baron, I have just one question. Um, am I married? Yes. <laughs> so, I am so proud of you, Lil Nas X. You real stiff when you dance, but you know what? You're a great performer. <laughs> he's stiff. He hit that he's stage. He, yeah. he hit that stage, though. He hit that stage, and he, he hit that stage, and he hit that floor, stage. He hit that stage. He hit that stage, Period. Huh? Okay. I'll tell you, you <laughs> cannot go touching a black woman's hair all out here in Atlanta. I don't care where you're from, okay? You just can't do it. You're going to find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. You okay, everyone, so I just got done working out, and man, oh, man, mama, she worked me out, honey. But right here, this is where all of the action is going to be, right? Man, I got that swag. Oh, now, we all know, like, that's, that's the song, right? Hey! 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 I want to drop on the clues bonds for my, my, my little niece, LaPortia. Uh, she hit, hit me yesterday and said, I can't trust that your other nieces are keeping you informed on the girls to watch out for. So I'm going to do that. Mulatto, a.k.a. Big Lotto. Yeah, shout <laughs> she out to Big Lotto. She literally just hit me that yesterday. She writes all her own raps and won and turned down the deal she had on the rap game. So uh, thank you to LaPortia for keeping your old ass uncle in the be careful what you what you wish for. Because every time my uncle is hard, next thing you know, you know, he going viral. <laughs> and y'all saying that, oh, he went too hard. He does too much. I can't believe he has Forrest Whitaker about his eye. Y'all know y'all always wondering no about the cap. eye. No cap. In your video, right, you have women of all shapes and yes. sizes. And honey, they all that work at that pole. Yes. And I was like, no, okay. Yes. Right. What makes you want to do that? Because it was very purposeful and I love yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think, you know, also with Sean Bankhead who choreographed it, it was all about showing what we thought was beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And also all those women are amazing dancers. So it's like size does not matter. You know, yeah. they, they're they're sexy, they're strong, and they know what they're doing. So really it was just about displaying all different versions of sexy. How did you prepare for this role? Even I, I watch my mom a lot. I just, oh, oh, my mom is a sweet, sweet woman. Yeah, so for me, I just laughed at it. I did it, even with the Bow Wow Challenge, I did a meme with like just a uh, video with Jess Hilarious when she came over. And I'm like, well, I'm about to give her my Jess. like, you know what, I have a Jack. So it was like the whole thing was just like turning into fun and laughter because I think that's what, you know, you, you slip up and you're all human beings and stuff happens and you just keep it moving. Okay, so what is your favorite song that you've ever written? Right now, because I know you may have many, but I know I love Fool For You. <coughs> Like, that's that's, that's my for you. Yeah. That's a that's a, a beloved record of mine. Um, I can't say I've had many records of my own that yeah. I could predict. You know what would what, what would become of them, but I was felt really strongly about Bright Lights, Bigger City. All right. When we did that record, I said this is like going to be one of them big, evergreen kind of records that yeah. people always love. I too sexy for just one. Too sexy for just two. <laughs> two yeah. Too sexy for just five. No more. Like Lawrence Hyde or Issa Hyde. Lawrence Hyde. What? All day. What? I'm with you guys all day. <laughs> hey everyone, it's your A scene inside of LaPortia Thomas here, and I am at UNICEF's annual Children First Gala. Okay. And last year they raised over nine hundred thousand dollars. This year they're gonna see if they can beat that amount. Carol, you're another just a definition or an example of when Beyonce said. Who run the world? Girls? She was talking about you, girl. <gasps> oh, that's right. So all you need. need. Listen, that four chair turn stuff is cute. Yeah. But give me one, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's a malfunction, if that chair turns around, I'm picking you stuck with me. <laughs> now, do, do you think she sounds 16? Yes. You do? She does sound okay. a little bit younger. How was the energy? Crowd, yeah. Yes. Oh, the energy is amazing. I didn't, I wish I would have went to like a big football school like this. Yeah. And you can just tell the school spirit everybody has. And apparently I'm wearing the wrong color. So. Okay, so we're gonna play this little game. Oh Lord. <clears throat> it's called What Would TT Do? All right. right? So I got like four different scenarios okay. here. And you gotta tell me what TT would do. Okay, okay. What would TT do if she caught her significant other cheating? 
It depends on what floor it is, because if, <laughs> if we're on like the seventh floor and there's a balcony, nine times out of ten, she'll throw them over the balcony. How was the energy in filming this movie compared to your other works? Yeah, I mean, I think everything is so different and every project has such a different energy, but this felt so extraordinary and completely incomparable to anything else that I've done. Okay, so I have to ask. Yes, ma'am. What does truth sound like? Uh -huh. so. 11 Alive's very own entertainment digital reporter and acing correspondent, LaPortia Thomas. Look at her go on the left-hand side of your screen. She was featured in the video representing her sorority, Sigma Gamma Rho, and she, of course, met Missy. And I want to salute uh, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Okay. Founders Day is today. That's right. They're celebrating their 98th Founders Day today. Salute to all the ladies of the royal uh, blue and gold. My niece, LaPortia, hit me up, and she was in all caps capital letters demanding that I uh, salute to the Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Because she said I, I told Envy to do it too. And are you married? Smart guy. Literally. Oh my God. I have You're to. going back to the 90s. I'm going all the way back. Okay. That was literally one of my favorite shows. Right? Oh, you're so sweet. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. I had to do this work. Okay. The look you give when Diddy said, I wasn't impressed. <laughs> I took you back to a moment, didn't I? You took me, yeah, you I see, took I, him all I right locked back to in a for a minute and I had to come out of that. Uh, you've been on the Real Housewives of Atlanta for nine seasons. Exactly. When you nine first years. started, did you think you would be on it for this long? Uh, I didn't think I'd be on it for nine minutes, <laughs> let alone nine years. And what advice would you give to young girls out there? that maybe going through some of the same things you went through on the show? Um, that, you know, we all make mistakes and uh, it's how we pick ourselves back up that counts. Love it. Have fun. And that's what I've done. And I am the only candidate in this race who's talking about mainstream issues that matter to Georgians. Education, jobs, and healthcare. What, which one of those three is like your first priority if you were to get elected? Our first obligation is to expand Medicaid because it is tied to everything else. Medicaid that is not fiscally responsible. It is irresponsible to not invest in education because a child who does not graduate from high school, who does not have the skills necessary to enter the workforce, likely either end up in prison or end up on welfare. And so it is fiscally irresponsible not to invest in education. She always says, save me, see me. Don't save me, see me. If you just see me, you'll realize that you don't have to save me. And I'm a true believer that conversations can change the world. I believe in that wholeheartedly. However, exhaustion is a real thing. I'm going to advocate that you conserve your mental health and you use it for the people that really genuinely want to know. And what do you think that black people, African-American people in general, need to move forward? I think what black people, African-Americans need to move forward is a voice a seat at the table. The thing about this podcast, right, is that I am a professional journalist. And I oftentimes see a lot of misinformation out there about certain things, and I really want to work to break down the facts and break down how we feel about them because they are two totally different things, right? Like, just because we feel one way, that doesn't mean that that's always the facts. We have to always be in defense mode. Santana and Salam sat down at V103 with the 11 Alive digital producer, LaPortia Thomas, saying that after all of that, they've found their life's purpose. The, part, the powerful part is knowing the ending that we survived, that we're still here, that we have our minds, that we have our faculties. Do you believe the media failed you? Of course, 100%. Absolutely. They changed the laws as it related to young people because of our case. They came out with the super predator law. Right. 94 crime bill law, that's... Yeah. that's yeah. They use that one on the backs of us. Yes, indeed. You know, you understand what your job is. Yes. And yeah. you say, you know what, as a journalist, I'm going to dig deeper. I want to figure out the truth, right? These people didn't do that. They just was trying to sell papers, you know? So, so now you're sitting there correcting them. Which is, which is, which is great. Amazing. Has there ever been a military testimony that you've heard that made you want to stay committed to supporting the troops? 
anytime I see anybody who's brave enough to come and sign up and you know, fight for our country, it's, it's more than enough to inspire me. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. The second coming was all black. That's when Wheeler, Boatwright, and Clayette decided to write their story. The book is titled, The U.S. Army's First, Last, and Only All Black Rangers, Second Airborne Ranger Company. Today, Wheeler, age 88, and Boatwright, age 90, do what they can so that today's young black men and women know about the battles of the past. I intend to introduce a resolution, and if there's anyone surviving, we can bring here to the Georgia General Assembly. I certainly intend to recognize them. A month ago, reporter LaPorsha Thomas told you about the first, last, and only all-black ranger unit that fought in the Korean War. Well, these men's stories made it all the way to the Senate floor. Political leaders flooded Ranger Boat Wright and Ranger Small to thank them for their service. When I saw George Floyd on that ground, and when I heard him say, Mama, I have to tell you, I didn't even see George Floyd's face anymore. I saw my son's face, my 22-year-old, who's away at college, who at any point, just a trip to the store, could have led to him being in that position. I can't breathe! All country basically for free. I stand with Black Lives Matter. Oh, in this incredibly historic and pivotal revolutionary moment in our country is to be an unadulterated truth teller and an educator. To those that are tired, exhausted, overwhelmed, maybe even paralyzed with emotion, I am too. I am too. I am exhausted. But I would say this to you. We cannot afford to stop. We are finally, it feels like, for the first time, at least in my lifetime, on the edifice of some real possibility of changing the way Black people live in this country. And then, once you're done resting and you've done uh, collecting your nourishment, keep going. The work needs you, I need you, and our children need us. Uh, I am an African-American man who also identifies as gay. It's imperative that I speak out on behalf of both communities because both communities are impacted by p police brutality. Both communities uh, su suffer racism. And that's something that I'm constantly having to amplify to the black community and communities of color because we receive it from both ends. I think that the most important thing people around this country, particularly black people um, who are not trans, and who, are, and who do not identify as L, G, B, T, or Q, um, is that in order for all of us to get free, we have to hold space and be present with the experiences of everyone who is Black. Sometimes people want to be in something so bad, you don't even realize you're, playing, you're praying for limitations. The numbers. Yeah. She you got are all about the numbers. I'm all about the numbers. Yes. Okay. All about the Benjamins. Um, go baby. ahead, break down the okay. challenge. This was actually posted on Beyonce's Instagram. Okay, so this is actually La Portia. She is one of our digital contributors here at Eleven yes. Alive. And there she is doing the dance. This has gone viral. The dance that is she has posted multiple uh, fans doing this dance. It's kind of like a different version of the electric slide. Sisters! Yes! Sisters! Yes! Real story. Went to urgent care, had to lay on the table, had to tell them I got an ingrown hair. And she was like, oh, girl, we see it all the time. Lay back. Injected me with lidocaine. I'm looking up, and I'm like, <sighs> and she's like, all right, we got to bust it. So all of that happened. I mean, Erica Banks. I'm so uh, sorry. Did you just say bust it, Erica Banks? <laughs> I'm so sorry. We just glossed over it. 
We glossed over that whole story. <laughs> Unless you can go off top like a Conway, that's special. So now Rhapsody, my uncle, who happens to be Charlemagne the God, loves you to death. It's always you. It's always you. It's always you. It's you. It's you. It's you. Like he, I texted him today and I was like. Guess why I'm interviewing? <laughs> and I'm a huge believer in don't put people in a box, don't put me in a box, I won't put you in a box, right? However, to be labeled an icon, you have to do all of it. Deanna Taylor, our very own local talent, Jay Nova, Evanda Holyfield, Boosie Collins, Tamela Mann, Keisha Knight Pulliam, and so many more were all there to honor Miss Jackson. So yes, okay. We are with a scene insider LaPorsha Thomas, who has a very special guest. Yes, I am. I am here with Araya McGarry, hey, who works with the board. Tell us what you do with the Emmys. I'm on the executive board of governors for the Emmy Awards here in the Southeast. When me and this particular person sat down to talk, we both came to the table with egos. We both tried not to, but then we both end up doing it anyway. Right? Dang. And I can be honest about that because when your feelings are hurt, you result to yeah. your ego because your ego protects you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Warren, would you agree? Uh, I, I'm kind of different. Um, some people say you I'm You don't kinda... got a lot of friends? No, I don't. Yeah, see. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> don't I, I got I no don't. friends? How close is too close? How close is too close? <laughs> um, are you legal? Right, right. It's not just good enough to have a million followers because you can have a million followers that make zero dollars every month. Right. Right? Or you can have a smooth 3800 and be bringing in a smooth 3800. <laughs> I don't ever want to be a caricature of myself. That's not my goal. Yeah. Trying to create this image that I can't live into. That's not me. You know, I mess up. But I also win big. That's all. <laughs> I, love I messed up, but I win big. Period. Oh, all right. I ain't going to stay down for too long. That's all I'm saying. Yeah.